In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we're here uh, to celebrate the uh, death of uh, Mr. Kevin Clifford of uh, the United States, who, uh, who died, uh, who died uh, this week. Uh, some of you may not know, but in Latin, uh, Kevin is called genius. So it's a little bit different than English. Uh, so we, have to, we always uh, say the prayers in Latin. So when you're confirmed, you're confirmed with your name in Latin, not in your name in English. And uh, when you die, you're prayed for with your name in Latin, not your name in English. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we have, after death, we know there's the judgment. Uh, when you die, when we say somebody's dead, we say he's been uh, judged. Uh, and uh, because he has to be judged, as soon as the soul leaves the body, that's what happens when you die. Well, the soul needs to know where to go. Uh, and so it has to be judged to find out where it's supposed to go. If it's been perfect, uh, it goes to heaven. Uh, we saw in the gospel yesterday for the feast of St. John Gualbert, uh, that our Lord said, "Be ye perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect." So He set a He set a high standard for us uh, that will be judged by the standard of perfection. And if we are perfect, well, then we, the soul is told to go to heaven. There's many most souls are not perfect. Uh, most uh, most of us are not perfect, and so the soul cannot go to heaven. And then it has to it has to be perfect. There's nothing imperfect. No, no imperfections are, are allowed in heaven. Everything is uh, absolutely perfect there. So a soul with imperfections uh, has to go to purgatory and be perfected by fire. And, uh, it's a terrible agony, a terrible suffering uh, that the souls undergo. They will, they will undergo it because they, they don't want to be in heaven with all their imperfections. And they can see all their imperfections. Uh, at their judgment when they die, they see their soul as it is, not as uh, they might have dreamed it was, but as it properly is. And so those that are, have imperfections have to be uh, purified in purgatory. And of course, those that don't love God are sent down to hell. Uh, well, they'll be with the devils uh, forever. And, uh, and that's a great majority of the men, probably. It's probably the great majority. So we have this judgment, and now today people say, well, I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be judged. And uh, the, the council, the Vatican Council says, well, you know, it's an article of our creed. We believe in the judgment that our Lord will come again uh, to judge the living and the dead. That will be, be the judgment at the end of the world. So there's different judgments. Uh, there's the judgment when you die. That's called the particular judgment. There's the judgment uh, that at the end of the world, uh, when uh, we're all together judged, everybody, all the living and the dead will rise and everybody will be there and judge together. But there's also where we can judge our, ourselves and have our, uh, submit our own sins, accuse ourselves before the tribunal of God. And that's the, that's the judgment of the sacrament of confession. And, uh, and the sacrament of confession prepares us for the particular judgment because at the sacrament of confession we accuse ourselves of our sins and uh, we say we're sorry for our sins and uh, we get absolved uh, from our sins and we know that when we get absolved from our sins uh, uh, they are gone they are absolved they are washed away as, uh, our lord uh, and we're no longer chained by them so that's uh, the liberty of that judgment now the conciliar church and the council well they've got rid of the tribunal of confession they don't have confession anymore and they don't believe in the judgment because uh, they got rid of the standards they say there's no absolute standard that we have to live up to there's no law of god that we have to uh, uh, uh say yes i must uh, uh, uh submit to the law of God, I must uh, fulfill the law of God, I must do what God wants. I must uh, obey the Ten Commandments. This is uh, what the church has always taught, but the conciliar church says, no, you don't have to obey the Ten Commandments, so we don't need uh, the confessional. We don't need a confessional because there's nothing to confess, because the standard that you live by is the standard that you set for yourself. And so you, if you think uh, something is okay to do or good to do, well then it's good to do uh, for you and that's your standard. So, uh, and that's how you'll be judged by what you 
decided it would be right for you. <coughs> uh, and, uh, so uh, if you decide, for example, you can wor worship some other god like Pacamama, that's what Pope Francis does, well that's all right for you. So the first commandment uh, doesn't oblige you anymore. Uh, now you're free to uh, have false gods. And uh, if you decide you want to blaspheme, well then the second commandment doesn't apply, it doesn't apply to you. It doesn't apply because you've changed your standard to your standard, blasphemy is okay. And so on with all the other uh, commandments. And so there's really nothing uh, to judge before you for because whatever you've done is good. This is what the conciliar church teaches because you thought it was good at the time you did it. So therefore it was good. And so there's no uh, judgment, no absolution of sins because there's no sins to absolve. And so when everybody dies, well, they go to heaven. And this is why we use white vestments for the uh, mass of the dead now in the conciliar church. And we have white hearses and, uh, uh, because uh, and we uh, just uh, applaud everybody's life and say, well, they're with the angels now and they're, and they're dead. And this is all false. This is all lies. So we have to say, yes, I'm going to submit to this particular judgment. And we should think often of our judgment and say, I have to live so that I can be perfect, so that when I die, our Lord can say to me, come, be blessed of my Father, into the reward, the mansion that's prepared for you in heaven. That's what we want to hear. But that's what very few souls hear, because very few souls consider their judgment every day when they're living and saying, I'm going to be judged by what I'm doing uh, right now, by what I'm doing. And, uh, and there's ways that we could say, well, I could do be better. Often I could do better. In our day, uh, we have to ask ourselves, uh, is it better for me to look at my phone? Or maybe I can put my phone down and say a decade of the rosary or say something else or do something else. Bishop Williamson says we should say 15 decades of the rosary every day. Many of us say, well, we don't have time to do that, but we have time to squander on <coughs> other, other things. And so we could say instead of squandering that time, I could think of my judgment and say I'm going to be judged in this manner. So everybody is judged. So Mr. Clifford has been judged. We don't know what the judgment was, but we know that God, our Lord, it's before the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ is the one that judges us. Our Lord Jesus Christ in his human nature uh, judges us when he died. The angels bring a throne. He sits on the throne in the, the judgment seat, and you appear before him. And you're judged for your whole life uh, and uh, what you've done. And if you've been, uh, had your sins forgiven in confession, well, you're not judged for them. But the judgment is strict and it is just. But for some people, it's, uh, there's uh, more mercy entered in. Those who are clients of the Blessed Virgin Mary, those who wear her scapular, those who wear a miraculous medal, those who wear her <coughs> rosary, well, she comes and, um, and asks our Lord to mitigate the judgment, has some mercy. She asks for mercy for her clients and says, Lord, have mercy on this, uh, my client. And so that's why it's important to wear the scapular, wear the miraculous medal, and, and, uh, and pray our rosary and make our other devotions uh, to Our Lady because uh, then the judgment will not be so strict. She will be there to say, Lord, have mercy, have mercy on this my friend and our Lord always listens to his mother so if she's there asking for mercy for us well then our Lord will be merciful at the judgment and uh, so we want you to say yes we want to have this devotion to our blessed mother we don't think we're not going to be judged we are going to be judged and that's why we should judge ourselves strictly and uh, very strictly uh, now and when we see we have sins we should make an act of contrition for them and say Lord I'm sorry for that sin and we know if we have mortal sins, well, we have to go to the, the confessional. We have to uh, confess our sins in the confessional and tell our Lord there we're sorry. Tell him we're, first we have to tell him we're guilty, and then we have to tell him we're sorry. And then uh, we obtain the absolution. So we want to uh, uh, frequent the confessional and uh, uh, frequent the uh, flying away from the occasions of sin and uh, trying to think often of our own judgment we might be judged mercifully. And so we want to pray for all the dead. That's one thing we have to do also. We pray often for the dead. And so today we pray for Mr. Clifford and hope that uh, God have mercy on him, that Our Lady uh, obtain mercy for him, and that uh, he has uh, saved his soul. 
and uh, we pray that the, the prayers of the Mass and the, the prayers of the uh, Church will mitigate his uh, purgatory, if he's in purgatory, and to mitigate his purgatory and uh, make it easier for him uh, to gain the happiness of heaven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you.